Well, on our first episode, we spoke with the former Tiber defenseman, captain of the 2016 Western Conference Championship team, Jared Smith. For our second episode, we're going to stay on the blue line, but we're going to go back a little further, about 20 years into the past, and bring back a, a fan favorite to join us on this edition of our alumni series. Welcome in Zach Fitzgerald. It's been a, quite a while, Zach, almost 20 years uh, since you <laughs> You put on that that jersey uh, with the crest that you see behind me. Um, before we go into what you've been doing since then, over the years since you left, tell us right now. I know you're you're originally from Two Harbors, Minnesota, up by Duluth, but right now you're in Toronto. What, what are you doing up in Toronto? Yeah, I'm. Uh, I grew up in. I was born in Two Harbors, grew up in Duluth, and then found my way out to you guys in Seattle. But yeah, we're up in Toronto now. My wife is uh, from Winnipeg. <clears throat> Excuse me yelling at kids all weekend now so i lose my voice quite often <laughs> but getting to that basically what i'm doing up here is i'm coaching um it's been a lot of fun i kind of i work with team development individual development um the lead instructor at a place called the hockey factory here so we're we're, we're building our way towards basically a full-time hockey school uh but for the time being we we do specific um position training and privates and teams and basically kind of hit all the areas of hockey. So, you know, doing something that I love and know pretty well. You mentioned family. Tell us a little bit about your, uh, your family. I've got two kids now, Finley Rose, who's five and uh, my son, Ollie, who's one and a half. Um, my wife, Crystal's from Winnipeg. I met her when I played up for the Manitoba Moose a couple of years back and she joined the journey and basically went with me all over the all over the world. Really, we went down from from New York up to back to Canada, back down to New York, and then over to the UK. So, uh, very fortunate to have a great family. Well, as we mentioned, it was about twenty years ago when you last wore the the T Bird uh, sweater. Uh, you were here from two thousand and one to two thousand and five, uh, and you played. My numbers are right: two hundred and forty eight regular season games. Now, you weren't necessarily a big-time point producer, but you did have 22 goals, 46 assists in your time, and you finished as a plus 41 player in those years, and you were part of the first team, not just the first T-Birds team, but the first team ever in the Western Hockey League to claim a U.S. division banner because uh, when you first came into the league, there wasn't a Vancouver, there wasn't an Everett. When they joined, they went from conference to division play, so you were part of that. In fact, uh, you won two U.S. division banners uh, in your time with the T-Birds, but what memories stick out for you from your time playing with Seattle? Well, I mean, that's a good question. There was a lot of great memories. Like, like you said, we, we were fortunate to have some really good teams. Um, I think one of the funnest parts was watching some of the guys go on through their careers. Um, didn't keep enough contact with everybody, but <clears throat> every now and then speak with Nate Thompson, who was my roommate. He had a great career, just, just retired. So, um, proud of him, you know. Brooks Lake was the one who uh, who popped my teeth out. So whenever kids ask me what, what, what happened to the teeth, I say, well, thankfully it was a pretty famous guy who was a Stanley Cup champ, and you know, out there in the in the media with his his wife there. And uh, but you know, long story short, I think uh, collectively it was a it was a really good experience for me. You know, leaving home at the first time you know, when you're 16, you're driving away, you're driving 22 hours from home, and you know, you're getting a little nervous and maybe the tears are coming, you're leaving. But I think overall, I was really, I really enjoyed how it was such a family uh, environment. We, we grew a lot together, um, learned a lot together um, as teammates. And, and majority of those guys were there my whole time. And, you know, even Steven Gertson, who's still a part of the program, which is really great. Um, so, you know, seeing guys like that doing well and, 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 and watching these guys' careers and just I, if I had to choose a specific um, thing that stood out, I think when Everett came into to play, it was, it was a great rivalry. Portland was always a really good rivalry and, and 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 whatnot, but having those guys right in the backyard was a lot of fun. And now you got a guy like Mitch Love who's, you know, up in the NHL coaching the big boys. You know, people would ask me what memory I have of, of Zach Fitzgerald. I recall a game, and I think you were still in your, your rookie season, a game down in Portland at what they call now the Moda Center it was the Rose Garden at that point. Uh, there was a an altercation, uh, which you know <laughs> happened quite often with with Weird. Zach. Uh, 
<laughs> but I think initially you were involved, I think it was with Paul Gostad, who obviously went on had a pretty terrific uh, NHL career. He's a big guy. Yep. And yep. he was, I think, either 19 or 20 at the time. He was 16. And when yep. that finished up, you turned around and there was another guy coming. I think it was another of their 20-year-olds. I can't remember his name, though. And then you took care of him. Do you remember that incident? <laughs> That's funny you say that. That happened a few times uh, in my career, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it happened in uh, Toronto one time when um, people might know the name Colton Orr. Um, he was he was tough, tough guy the, to the point where people wanted him to x-ray his hand because it was supposed to have metal in his hand. But I was going doing the same thing on the bench, uh, fighting a guy called Kelsey Wilson. I'd turn around and Colton Orr is shaking around our captain. So I had to go after him. And so I guess it's kind of in my blood. Well, you certainly you stood up for your, your teammates, but again, you played on, as you mentioned, some really good teams that won two U.S. Division banners. When it, it came to playoffs, you know, it's funny, you know, the first year uh, you surprised Portland in, in the first round of the playoffs, winning that epic seven game series. I think Trevor Johnson scored the goal that, that won that. And then you'd lost in the next round of the prohibitive favorites to win it all. And they did. That was the Kootenai Ice who, who won yeah. that that year. So they went on to win a championship. And I think the other two years you were in the playoffs, you ran into a Kelowna and they were kind of your nemesis and, and they would yep. knock you out of the playoffs, including an epic seven game series. Do you remember the series against uh, Kelowna where you won the first two games on the road, came home with the two games and then the lead in the series, couldn't score a goal on home ice, lost the series in seven without scoring a goal at what was then Key Arena. I do. I do. I, I remember, I do remember those games, you know, Shea Weber on the other side and a couple of really big names, you know, we, we had some, some battles, you know, I, I can remember Greg Black and fired up for those ones. And you know, we, we had a really good, tough, talented team. Um, it was kind of a playoff team, but yeah, I do remember that. I, 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 you know, I mostly remember the, the meals after where we were disappointed with that. You know, we were, you know, like you said, we'd set ourselves up. And, um, you know, it's tough. It's tough how it goes. It was funny as we sit here talking, I'm preparing to first for a game at home and then to go on the road for a long trip to Alberta, six games, nine nights. I'm sure you fondly oh, yeah. remember those long bus rides. Can't forget those ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I feel for the boys, but you know what? It's, it's great. It's great bonding time. You get to know your teammates, have some laughs. Uh, I think at that time the iPad or iPod came out for the first time. I used to carry my big CD case, but the but the uh, iPod came out for those road trips, which which was a godsend. Well, you were drafted by the St. Louis uh, Blues in the third round of the 2003 NHL entry draft, and you know third round pick. That's that's a pretty high selection in the draft process. Uh, tell us about that experience. What it was like to have your name called and be selected by an NHL team? Oh, it was, it was amazing. My, uh, my grandparents were, were down there with me. It was a lot of fun. Um, like you mentioned, uh, a lot of these, these guys that we would battle were down there too. So it was quite fun to kind of take it all in with guys that you're normally, you know, going toe to toe with, or maybe a few battles or, you know, chasing around the ice. And, um, so it was, it was a ton of fun down in Nashville. Um, not, not your typical hockey town, but it was, all focused on the draft. Um, it was a ton of fun. Um, I I mostly remember, you know, you know, going down there. When you go down there, they kind of assume you're going a little bit higher, and so you have this this built up in your mind. And I'm I I can remember sitting there like, oh my god, I'm I'm not even gonna get picked. I'm just kind of I'm here, and I was getting nervous, and I'm looking at my grandparents, and I can see that they're getting nervous, and. You know, I was getting down to the third round, and it was the end of the day after the third round, and and uh, they started. It started kind of bringing up, you know, Seattle Thunderbirds, and I was like, "Oh, here we go!" And I can just remember that it was after that it was a bit of a blur going around the table, shaking everybody's hand. Um, but it was a pretty special time, you know, having my grandparents down there, and and you know, guys like Sean Bell were around there. He went in the first round to St. Louis, so you know, battle against him all season, and then you know eventually become sort of teammates and uh, be picked together and experience that together. So overall it was, it was amazing. Uh, and you know what? I credit a lot to that, to the teams that you're talking about. I mean, I think, I think it was uh, that Kootenai uh, playoff season where, when I was 17 and, you know, <clears throat> 
to go to go higher in the draft you need everybody around you doing well too you know and um i had a i had some really great uh you know mentors and and coaches i actually um uh, speaking to dean Schnoth a little bit here and there he's here in toronto as well i'm sure you know and he actually you know when it came to transition time for me uh he was one of the guys i spoke to so um yeah you know what at the end of the day it was it was so special and and it's one of the highlights of my life for sure. Well, you went on to a fairly uh, lengthy pro career, mostly in the American Hockey League, and uh, as you mentioned, also over overseas. Um, what was it like? You finished your career over in the elite league over in, in Great Britain in the UK. Uh, what was it like playing over there? What are the crowds like? How do they accept or how do they enjoy the game? Because I saw a little, a lot of interaction between you and the fans over there uh, through your Twitter feed. So obviously they love hockey just as much as we do. It looks like. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's, it's probably one of the few countries where hockey is growing, where it's, it's new to a lot of people. Um, you know, like I would have said when I went to school in Seattle when I was 16 and people were like hockey, what, what are you talking about hockey? You know? <laughs> I still remember those conversations, but it, it was like that in the UK. Some people are getting sick of the football where, you, you know, you can't, you can't drink in the stadium. You can't kind of let loose. Fan, some fans are too rowdy, too crazy. And um, so there's a lot of, you know, uh, desire to move to something else that they can follow. And hockey kind of ticks a lot of the boxes for them. It's fast moving. They love the fighting. So I fit right in and the physicality and whatnot. So, you know, and like you said, on social media, that was my first um, interaction with them is, you know, when I signed over there, they, they were all over social media. I'm like, wow, this is, this is a bit insane. But, you know, once you get over there, it's something you actually have to, you know, like I said, they're growing. So interactions with the fan is big. Um, you know, showing the fans appreciation, which, you know, I like, you know, I, I, I enjoyed doing my entire career starting in Seattle, you know, going at 16 to 20, you don't realize, you know, how important it is until you actually get there and, and spend time with people like that, that are supporting you the whole way. And I still get messages from fans here and there. And actually, uh, one of the fans from out there sent me my drafted Jersey, um, uh, um, by, or my game worn Jersey, excuse me, with Vancouver. Uh, but long story short, it's it's a great – it's a, the league is growing. Um, guys like myself who had played in the American League for, you know, 10-plus years or whatnot are starting to go there. Um, some NHL alumni guys are starting to go there. It's a great um, setup for school. I was fortunate to do the school program and got my MBA when I played over there. So it's – there's some incentive for, you know, older guys. And then long story short, the game is is growing. It's – exciting for people you can it's a family environment even though you got the fights breaking out on the ice rather than in the stands at like football so it's um it's it's definitely uh one of the few countries where you're going to see it get bigger and bigger and bigger and probably better players um, as they go they're starting to get more teams over into the chl um which compete against your top countries like sweden and switzerland and germany and whatnot now, did you finish as a player coach your, your last year over there? And is it Glasgow or Glasgow? <laughs> it's Glasgow. And technically, you could say I was uh, at times a player coach, but I was I was the head coach there. Um, but I, I coming fresh out of playing, it's unlike most pro um, leagues, there's no farm system or there's no uh, development system that – where you can have players at the, you know, snap of your finger. So we went down on a lot of injuries and I just, I had to play. I mean, <laughs> I suited up. I wasn't in great shape, but, uh, you know, I did my best to, to not hurt the team. Let's put it that way. And, um, but yeah, no, I, I played over there for six years and then I, they asked me to come back as, as head coach. I wanted to be player coach, but, um, I took the job, um, on the back on, on the bench there. Um, it was quite difficult. I didn't, I didn't have a full-time assistant coach, so I was uh, responsible for basically everything, you know, the recruiting, the coaching, everything. My, the, uh, I did have a player assistant coach. He, he was more focused on playing though. You know, I, it's a lot to ask him to, you know, be in the office all day with me. Um, so yeah, it was, it's, it's a good spot over there. Well, lastly, before we let you go, um, you know, if you were to come back here to Seattle, obviously 
key arena doesn't exist in the form that it was. You were here, obviously. Right. They did it for the NHL, but the, the the roof is still the same. It's just that the Climate Pledge is not what key arena was. <laughs> but I'm sure you'd have some fond memories of uh, the practice arena over in Kirkland. And, uh, you know, just what are some of the places around Seattle that uh, you got used to that you kind of missed? Yeah, the uh, I didn't get to, I didn't get to go to the fancy new practice rink there in Kent uh, that the boys have now. It was uh, it was the I can forget what the the shopping center you maybe just called, but the Kirkland rink there was right by majority of my billets. I don't know if all the billets are over there if they moved south now, but um, no, Kirkland was a, a it's a big part of my life. I spent a lot of time there. Um, one of my favorite parts is driving down to Seattle from from that part of town where you, you start going through the hills and then you see, you see the, the hills and then you start seeing the water and, you know, you cross the bridge and Seattle is such a beautiful city. Um, I look, I really look forward to bringing my family out there and um, showing them all the ropes. And uh, my, my wife's never been out there. My daughter wants to show me her artwork. She's done here. Good job. <laughs> um, well, but yeah, no, the, the, the skyline, the key arena, all the areas around there, obviously the, the fish market is famous. We'd bring all our friends and family when they'd come finish or um, visit down there. But um, trying to think what specific part about Kirkland other than than our rink and the uh, the spot we'd have chicken and rice every day and um, <laughs> the pizza spots and all the billet places we hung out up there. It was a great it was a great time. Well, when you do come back, make sure you make a stop a little bit further south into Kent and see the Excesso Showwear Center where the team is playing now. And there are two banners hanging in this building that you were a part of, those two U.S. Division banners from the 2003 and the 2005 season. So there's a little piece of you here as well. But, Zach, we certainly appreciate your time. It's good to see you after 20 years, but don't be a stranger. I, I actually really look forward to coming out there, and I can't wait to see you. Hopefully, you'll give me the 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 show, and uh, maybe I can sit up there with you. <laughs> we'll love to have you. All right, Tom. Thank you so much. That is former Tiber defenseman Zach Fitzgerald, our guest here on our continuing series as we speak with alumni, former Tiberians, and we thank you for joining with us.